Hello and welcome to the Thursday, May 9th, 2024 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from San Diego, California. Xavier today posted a diary with instructions to analyze disks from a Synology network accessible storage system. There are a number of reasons why you may want to do so. For example, of course, forensic investigation of a compromised device, or you just try to recover data from disks after other parts of the device, like the motherboard, for example, failed. This isn't all that difficult if you have a Linux machine to connect the drives to. Xavier walks you through enabling software, RAID, and logical volumes to be able to mount the devices to a Linux system. Now, some of these instructions may very well work for other manufacturers' devices too. They all kind of work similar. Some of them may have slightly different RAID configurations, so you may have to experiment with this a little bit. And today, of course, we had our annual panel at RS. A now had a slightly different uh, set of speakers uh, this time. We had, uh, for the first time, Terence Williams. Terence Williams uh, talked about some of the threats AI poses to election security, in particular to influencing social medias and the like. So uh, that's what Terence uh, talked about. Stephen Sims uh, talked about, uh, well, some of the limitations, but also how AI may help attackers write exploits faster. He debunked some of the claims that have recently been made that, well, it turned out not to be quite true. And also talked a little bit about how defenders may be able to use similar techniques to find vulnerabilities faster and with that also fix them faster. Heather Barnhart had a pretty interesting but also disturbing topic, and that's sextortion in particular targeting teens. It appears that the uh, Boys in the age of 10 to 14 are actually most vulnerable uh, to these kind of attacks. Either real or fake uh, nude pictures are being used to essentially blackmail uh, these individuals. And uh, then they're either asked to pay money or in some cases also deliver compromising material about their friends to essentially then allow these attacks to snowball. Very disturbing here also that many of the victims here are committing suicide as a result of these extortion attempts. And Heather had some advice as to what to do if someone you know, in particular, of course, kids are being attacked that way. And also a little bit about how to talk to your kids about uh, these issues. And I talked uh, first about uh, vulnerabilities that are caused by technical debt in particular, as uh, this applies uh, to corporate and enterprise information security uh, devices. This is, of course, something that you may have noted in the last couple of years, where we have more and more attacks against sort of these firewalls, VPNs, and other sort of larger uh, enterprise uh, software packages uh, like this. And uh, well, it turns out that uh, many of uh, these uh, products do have a long history going back into like the early 2000s. And in one example that I saw even back to 1998, and of course, vendors aren't always that successful in migrating uh, this uh, software then to newer versions, uh, newer platforms as become available. The software is also often written in various programming languages uh, like, uh, for example, Perl for some of the older pieces, then maybe Java, and more recently, a lot of Python. The second issue that I talked about was how do you establish identity online in particular as so many of our interactions now happen remotely, either in the work environment with work from home, but also in business transactions as you, for example, set up a bank account without actually entering the branch. Deepfakes, again, sort of one of the methods being used here by attackers to impersonate individuals. And I discussed here on the podcast some famous cases where either a voice impersonation or in some cases even video impersonation was used to essentially do something that feels a lot like business email compromise. 
The defense is here not so simple and in the end you have to find the right balance as to how you mitigate this risk and also how you're not being too intrusive to your customer. That is also important that you sort of you know, gain the trust of the customer, that you explain to them why you may need things like, for example, a video call or a personal visit uh, to an office or something like this in order to establish uh, the person's identity. I don't know what the exact schedule is, uh, if uh, RSA will make this keynote uh, publicly available. Right now I believe it's only available uh, to individuals who actually registered uh, for the conference, but in the past they sometimes after a few days or sometimes after a few months have made these keynotes public uh, on uh, YouTube. Well, that's it for today, all we really have uh, time for. And well, all the other news, I'll catch up on that uh, tomorrow. So talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.